What's going on guys, today I'm going to be showing you a video on how to animate your own original image that you made in Photoshop, but you can also use any image you want as long as it has layers, and in this underwater image I believe we use 5 or 6 layers and we uh, animate each one individually. And yeah, we're just going to jump right into it and show you how to start it out in Photoshop. So to make this picture, I ended up using five different layers as you can see. Uh, this was the background layer, it's a just an underwater photo, and I ended up uh, splitting up the jellyfish. This is the jellyfish as it's a uh, full picture, but I ended up uh, using the uh, quick selection tool uh, to split the jellyfish in half. So basically what you would do for that, uh, you can just zoom in and then you use your quick selection tool to try and just get all the edges around the jellyfish's head, just the head. Uh, make sure you have the layer selected. Go to layer via cut. So now you have, uh, you can zoom out and now you have one layer for just the head, one layer just for the uh, tentacles, and if you wanted just to edit that, uh, edit that up a little bit, you could use the eraser just to fix it up. I'll just leave it for now. Uh, and then what you could do is literally just uh, copy and paste, uh, drag them into here, and there you go. But I'll just cover that up for now. Uh, so next we'll move on to the particles layers. Uh, so basically, I just added uh, this picture, it was just a particle uh, PNG photo, so the uh, background is transparent. Um, it just gives it more of like an underwater effect. Uh, you don't have to do it, it's pretty much a preference, but for this uh, video, I'll keep them in so I can just add the effect and it makes it just look cooler. And so once you have all that put together, you can adjust the colors. Uh, originally, the colors were much more uh, dim, and I just used uh, the hue and saturation, and I just lightened it up a little bit by adding more saturation to it. As you can see, it just lightens it up. Maybe add even a, more, even a little more brightness to it, something like that. Just give it more of a bright and vibrant uh, look. So once we have our original picture all completed, uh, we can jump into After Effects. Uh, we just load in the project by just file exporting or file importing. Uh, so once we have it, we have all of our layers. We got the right particles, left particles, uh, the jellyfish's head, the tentacles, and obviously the water in the background. So let's see. To start this off, uh, why don't we start off with the jellyfish's head, the first thing that we're going to animate, and so. When you think of a jellyfish, it kind of the head always kind of just like flaps up and flaps down, kind of like the edges of uh, its head kind of just flaps up, flap down. So, uh, what kind of effect do we want for that? We want to go into effects, we go into distort, and we are going to use the ripple effect. So, uh, we want to use the center of the ripple. We put it right in the middle of the jellyfish's head, right, right about there. Uh, we'll give the radius about a size of 80. We want it the asymmetric. Uh, we'll go with the wave speed of 0.8 and we'll go keep the height and width at about 20. So we'll check how that looks. So after it, the preview loads you can just load it and see how it gives that awesome like flapping effect. It looks exactly like how the jellyfish would look and move. It honestly might even be moving like a little fast. It might just be because we're zoomed in. Uh, you know, it, it's not bad. It is like kind of looks a little fast. Maybe move down to just like a point like six. Let's see the difference there. Let it load. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that looks pretty good. Point six. And when it's once we animate the entire jellyfish's movement from left to right, it'll you won't even really be able to notice that it's moving a little too fast, but I think that actually is a good speed. It looks exactly like how the jellyfish moves in real life. So next we're going to move on to the right particles. And the right particles, as you can see, we just make sure they're selected. Uh, they're, we split them, we split the particles in half, uh, one on the left, one on the right, so we can animate both sides uh, to make them just look better overall. Uh, so for the particles, we want to use a, another distort effect. It's going to be the CC slant. Uh, this time we're going to use keyframes. So we're going to make sure we uh, select the little stopwatch. And we're going to start at, let's put the right at starting at about 20. And then move it all the way to the end. And we'll go all the way to minus 20. And so let's take a look at how that looks. 
So after it loads, you can see it gives that nice slow motion movement of just like the little particles moving across the sea. It looks really good actually. I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, for the floor, we want to keep the floor like just at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, the default, usually you will pick a good spot for uh, the floor in this area because you just want, you don't really want them to move um, in the middle because then it would just look bad. You want the floor to be all the way at the bottom. See, as you can see, they move slowly across. Uh, so next, we're just going to do honestly the same thing for the left particles. Uh, go into the distort, uh, CC slant. And for the left particles, we're going to use, we're going to start at negative 20. And then we're going to move our cursor all the way to the end. Go to 20. And then let's check how that looks after the preview loads. That actually looks really good, I think. We have uh, the right particles coming in. Uh, moving from right to left and the left particles moving from left to right so there will never be not enough there honestly kind of does get a little and eh, no it's it doesn't even go long enough for uh, the particles on the right to really stop uh, appearing so I think it honestly isn't bad if you want to if you think it looks a little weird still you could uh, just duplicate let's say like just duplicate uh, the right particles and then maybe move it a little bit, maybe uh, make it a little bigger, push it like down here. So it may maybe just fills in the screen more. So as you can see, like there's never any places around the screen where there's no particles and it just never looks empty. So for the jellyfish's tentacles, we're gonna use another disorder effect. Uh, we're gonna use something called wave warp. Uh, we want the wave type to remain the same at sign. Uh, we're going to go to the height to 6. We're going to go width to 68. And we're going to keep the direction at 90. Uh, the speed, we don't want it to go too fast. So as you can see, one is pretty fast and it kind of just looks a little funky still. Like you, you do, jellyfishes do not move that fast, you know? So you really want to move it down. We're going to put it down to like a 0.4. I think that's a pretty good speed when you keep it at a 0.4. So as you can see, that's a much better speed. It looks much more realistic. Uh, looks honestly just like a jellyfish's movement. I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. Uh, I, love, I love how the particles are moving in the background. And so last but not least, we need to animate animate the actual water background uh, so for this we can just use another uh, we can use the ripple effect again uh, so we want to go to ripple and this time we want to use the center of the ripple we want to keep it at the top because we want since we are underwater we kind of want uh, effect uh, from the water at the top to be bouncing up and down looking like you're actually underwater so we're gonna keep the center of the ripple just right at the top here even like kind of like put it up above honestly and turn the radius way up so we want the center of the ripple to be all the way up here to giving like that w bouncing water effect all the way at the top you see that see it's going a little fast though maybe go down to like a 0.4 in speed let's check it out now and so as you can see it honestly is giving a pretty nice uh water bouncy effect uh, maybe even go down to like a 0.3 honestly and even move the center of the ripple even like a little bit higher to be honest and i think oh look at that see it gives like that nice effect bouncing water it looks like you're just underwater maybe even put the uh the wave width a little bit higher go to like 26 around 30. i think that looks a lot better it looks really good like that so we now have all the animations done to the layers, I believe. Uh, the jellyfish head is done using the ripple effect. Uh, the tentacles is done using the wave warp effect. Uh, all the particles are moving left to right using slant effect. And uh, the water background of the water uh, is giving that bouncing underwater effect using the ripple. So now that we have that done, uh, we want to use keyframes to actually animate the actual movement of the jellyfish uh, head and the tentacles. And as you can see, uh, once this loads, because the head and the tentacles are not attached to each other, they're actually a little bit off, like right there. You can see that a little bit. So we kind of have to play with the values of the tentacles and the head to get it perfectly. So I'm just gonna freeze it at the beginning here. Uh, we're gonna go to the tentacles layer, go to P for position, 
And we're just gonna move it just up a little bit. Move the Y up a little bit as well. Uh, so there we go. So now they're actually merging. There's no white space in between. Uh, so they're not, doesn't look like they're disconnected. So now we're actually gonna animate the jellyfish's movement. Uh, so we're gonna select both of the layers. We're gonna have jellyfish head and the tentacles selected. And we're gonna press P for position. And why don't we start the position actually outside the screen so we can have them animating like onto the screen. So we'll have them start out and then we're going to make sure we're at the beginning of our sequence and we are going to press uh, position for to set a keyframe. And why don't we just do a simple animation we're going to have them move just slowly off the screen. So we'll go all the way to the end and we can just either use the numbers to move him or we can honestly just drag him as well so we can go uh, a little higher on the y and then move his x from left to right we can go all the way until where he's like out of the screen and have it look like that so we can run that and see how it looks so I personally actually like it a lot. Uh, it looks a lot like an actual jellyfish's movement. Uh, the, his tentacles are moving, his head is moving. I like the movement a lot. If you were not to actually like the straightaway movement, there is a different way we could do it. Uh, we can just press Control Z to take away that keyframe. And so we have the keyframe starting at the beginning. We can move maybe into like two seconds, uh, have the jellyfish move down a little bit, Go all the way to like four seconds, have them come back up, go all the way, set to another keyframe at about eight seconds, move them a little bit on the to the right on the X, maybe even more a little up on the Y, and then maybe finish him all the way out to like 12 seconds, set another keyframe, push him down, and then all the way off the screen to end the sequence like that. And we can run this and we'll see how it looks. Not bad. It looks a little a little weird in some places because the tentacles don't move all the way up. So in, in this kind of animation, you're probably better off just going on a straight line. It just looks better overall. But it's really a preference thing. Um, we can also do a keyframe assistant uh, easy ease in and then easy ease out all the way at the end to just make it look smoother. So like I said, because the, the tentacles don't move uh, fully up and down, it just kind of looks a little strange when he goes up and down. So you're probably just better off going on a straight movement line but it's really up to preference. And last but not least, I also added a little bit of a fish to add like a different, uh, just like a different obstacle in, in the picture to give it more movement, make it look more lively. But like I said, up to you, uh, whatever you wanna do, whatever you think makes it uh, look the best. So that really is it guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know down in the comments how you like the video, what I can improve, and please subscribe for more content like this. Check out our other videos, and I will see you next time. Thank you.